Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and uh, I'm in a gondola in Aspen and I just happened to run into the CEO of Rivian Automotive, RJ Scaringe. Thanks so much for uh, taking some time to, no, to chat of today. My pleasure. <laughs> it's been fun to get to know the whole team. I mean, many of the employees yep. uh, over the last couple of months. And yep, uh, for, sure. for for those that uh, have been living under a rock the last couple of months, um, why don't you let everyone know who you are and what Rivian Automotive is? Sure. So we. Um up until about two, three months ago, as you said, we were completely stealth. We had no signs on our buildings. We were very quiet about what we were doing. Uh, but we came out at the LA Auto Show and actually showed our product. And this is something we've been working on for almost nine years. So I started the company mid-2009. And we decided to be really quiet about what we're doing because we wanted to get all the pieces arranged. We wanted to get the capital in place, the suppliers in place. This takes a very large team, a lot of horsepower to put this together. So put a very capable, very strong team together, uh, acquire and put a plant together. And then when we showed the product, we wanted to make sure the technology, the design, uh, all the features, those were things that we could show and this would ultimately be what customers get when we start deliveries. One of the things that we talked about earlier is this philosophy around um, execution. That's mm. really what you've done well over the last several years that you've been in stealth mode, yeah. uh, which is a completely reverse strategy from some other EVs. Sure. Where did that philosophy or mindset come mm. from? Because I, I, I have a really good feeling that that's ingrained in the culture of Rivian. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, when I started the company, uh, initially the product focus was more of a coupe, it was essentially a sports car. And I wrongly showed pictures and images and started to talk about that early on. And we made the decision in 2011 to have a pretty significant pivot to focus on the space you see today, what we think of as the adventure space. Vehicles are designed for function and utility, yeah. but really desirable. Um, when we did that, we said, you know what, let's be very quiet and let's not show anything until it's truly ready. And part of the challenge with this is the, the clean sheet aspect of starting, starting fresh gives the ability to dream about different things but we didn't want to just dream, we wanted to actually dream about it and then execute. So we took the decision to say, let's get all these pieces lined up. And it's really, as you said, it's ingrained in how we operate. So we, we very much believe and let the hardware and the product and the technology yeah. speak for itself, uh, rather than going out and hyping it and, and driving a lot of um, interest when it's not really truly complete. There's, um, I've noticed that a lot of people in the videos that I uh, published back in November about the truck and the SUV, uh, a lot of people are really gun shy mm. about a new EV company yeah. that has a, a flashy car. Um, what would you say to those people that are a little bit hesitant to get excited about a new electric vehicle car company? Well, sure, and that's it, that's that's exactly why we decided to say let's get the pieces arranged. So you know, to, to launch something like this, it it requires you know, more than a billion dollars in capital. It requires you know five, six hundred people on your engineering development team. It requires hundreds of suppliers to come together. It requires a manufacturing yep. solution. Uh, it requires technology that's been proven and tested in cold climates and yep. hot climates and robust climates. So we wanted to put all those pieces together and what we showed is the result of that. So yep. it's been tested. The team is very strong. We've got a wonderful yep. supply base. We, we purchased a manufacturing plant about two years ago. Mitsubishi, right? Yeah, from Mitsubishi. Yep. 2.6 mm -hmm. million square foot facility uh, just south of Chicago. So putting all those pieces together give us the confidence to say, you know, what we're showing is actual reality. We will be going to production with that. Um, but of course, because so much noise, so much hype, so much uh, sort of things in the system, it makes it harder for people to yeah. maybe perhaps see us as being different from those others. So you've got a truck and an SUV. Um, just go through some of the high level specs, range, performance, towing capacity, and so on. Sure, so the, the truck and the SUV share what we call a skateboard. And the skateboard has the battery pack in the floor of the vehicle and then drive systems front and rear. And for both vehicles, it actually is, the vehicles have four motors, two yeah. per axle, so one motor per wheel. And that allows us to have both incredible levels of performance, so zero to 60 in about three seconds. But also, in, and in many ways more importantly, it allows us to really precisely control the torque yeah. at each wheel. So if you're in a snowy environment or a, a slippery environment, let's say like a gravel road, the ability to put torque or power where you want is really meaningful. Yeah. So it it allows us to do things from an off-road point yeah. of view that really have never been seen before yeah. uh, from a combustion engine point of view. 
But we do that also in a way where we don't have to compromise on the on-road side. So it's really good on-road um, in terms of its dynamics, its ride, its driving characteristics. Um, but all of that's wrapped in something that still has a lot of function and utility. We want to make sure these are products that, yes, they're desirable, yes, they're high performance, yes, they can go off-road, but you can also use them on an everyday basis. So whether it's a surfboard and the gear tunnel through the side or a stroller, um, or whether you're putting fishing rods or whether you're putting gear or you're you know, at Home Depot, yeah. it, it allows you to do all these different things very flexibly, very easily with the vehicle. You've got uh, three battery size variants. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the range of each one because I think uh, this is first to market in in the top end battery yeah, size. Yeah, so, so we start, our, we have three battery sizes. The largest is 180 kilowatt hours. Yeah, so this massive. is big. Yes, yes. So this is 80% bigger than the biggest pack in the market today. Uh, that gets us well over 400 miles, um, a bit more in the SUV because it's a more aerodynamic shape. Uh, then we have a 135, which gets us uh, 315 to 330, depending on the vehicle, the truck, mm -hmm. SUV. Mm -hmm. And then we have a 105, which gets us around 240, 250 uh, in terms of range. But the interesting thing is uh, the way the architecture is laid out is with the battery being in the middle, the weight distribution yeah. is so low, despite the fact that there's so much ground clearance. So the way that these vehicles drive, they drive like a, a sports GT, mm -hmm. but with ground clearance that's, that's higher than anything on the road mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really enabled by that large battery that sits in the floor. How do you intend on tackling, uh, th so, so you're marketing this as an outdoor vehicle, how do you intend on tackling the range anxiety that people instantly have when you talk about taking an electric vehicle out into areas like the, <coughs> the wilderness? Sure. So it's um, this is one thing that has yeah. Was, one, one of the one things, of things, one of the reasons we wanted such a big pack is you know, you, let's say you're going to drive two hours and then go off roading, you still want to have some range left. Yeah. Uh, so the big pack gets us there very comfortably. Uh, we do have uh, charging infrastructure we're putting in place that's at branded, lo yep. you know, on brand locations. So okay. think like outdoor. So it's going to be like a Rivian plug-in? It allow you to charge when you're, you know, at a national park, at a ski resort, so yep. you can pick up those electrons when needed. But we also have some interesting auxiliary batteries that we're looking at to further extend, essentially like a digital jerry can. Yep. Uh, so these are some of the accessories we're also looking at adding to the vehicle as well. Mm -hmm. um, so towing was another thing. I I'm thinking through all the comments of people like, oh, this, you know, yep. it it's not going to work because of X, Y, and Z. Sure. Towing was another one. Sure. So this one comes up often. Like you have the diesel heads. Yep. You know, with with uh, diesel pickup trucks. Yep. And uh, that love to blow, you know, exhaust yep. out. Yep. So th that say that the the power is not there. The towing power is not going to be sure. there long term. So, yeah. um, how would you respond to someone who's like, I love the the power of a diesel, and I would totally adopt a, an EV truck if, if it had tow. the towing it's, power. It's, it's it's interesting from a torque point of view. We can tow. We can tow a building across the street. There's there's so much torque. So it's just a question of how far you can tow it. Yeah. You know, so you take you degrade your range as you're towing these these large loads. So for us, our, our truck has an 11,000 pound towing capacity. Um, frankly, we could go a lot higher than that. It could be 20 or 30,000 pounds. Uh, but it ends up your your range when you're towing sure. those those heavy loads starts to shrink. So with 11,000 pounds and assuming sort of an average aerodynamic use case you end up having your range. A 400 mile vehicle becomes something like a 200 mile vehicle. Talk a little bit about the um, the technology that's driving <laughs> the truck and the SUV. So I've heard some things about autonomy, like going up to the top of a mountain and then having that drive itself down to the bottom to sure. meet you there. So how does autonomy work into your vehicles? So there's even the word autonomy is uh, such a broad word that encompasses so many things. So for us, there's a couple different domains we think about. So there's on highway or on road. Yeah. And in that domain, it's a it's a level three feature. So when you're on the highway, you can take your hands off the wheel, your eyes off the road. So long day at the office, you get on the highway and you can be on your phone. Or yeah. you know, long day in the slopes, you can yeah. do the same. But we then have some really interesting sort of Rivian specific features that are unique to our brand. Uh, you know, one of them is this feature where it allows you to do things, uh, you know, when you're out, uh, let's say the vehicle meets you at the end of a hike. Yep. Um, we have some really interesting ones where we're going to have the vehicle, let's say you're in a national park, uh, we can give you a guided tour of that park, mm -hmm. um, you know, narrated and mm -hmm. explaining what you're seeing, but it's like the vehicle's on digital rails, mm -hmm. sort of Jurassic Park style mm -hmm. as, it, as it drives around the park. So these are some of the features we're going to be showing uh, over the course of the next year. Yeah. 
maybe we'll put you on one of the vehicles. Um, we'll give I'm, you a tour. I'm absolutely looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, so I noticed something at the reveal in, in, in regards to the HVAC. It looks very, very different. In fact, it looks a little bit mo Model 3-esque in terms of remedial. It doesn't look anything like my- but Not traditional vents. Yeah, yeah. So can you share anything about that? Because I haven't seen any commentary on that. Is it different? Well, it's, it's um, I guess first, it's, it's a very high capacity system. So okay. it can heat or cool the vehicle in these really extreme ambient conditions. Yeah. Um, but then, as you said, we don't have the traditional vents. One of the problems with those vents is uh, they're, they're easy to get jammed. They don't really look nice. They sort of break up the surface. So we have that area around the wood yeah. dash that's all basically allows for air to come out. Yeah. Uh, now that air can be directed, and it's directed through the touch panel. Digital. So, yeah. so it's digital. Yeah. It's up, down, right, left. Yeah. Um, and how, how the air is flowing in the cabin. And I would imagine. Of course, maps to you as a user. So yeah. if you say, as a user, I'd like the air to go here, the vehicle knows that, it remembers that. So when you get back in the car, it points it where you want it to go. Battery technology. So talk a little bit about that. 2170 cells, right? Yep. Um, what is going in to make the magic of this uh, 400 mile range? Yep. Do you have some unique things that you can share with yep. everyone that uh, people so we, don't know yet? So we take an off the shelf cell, like everyone does, uh, and we then integrate that into what we call a module. Yep. And the way the module set up is we very carefully control the temperature of the cell. So regardless of ambient, whether it's really cold or really hot, with a thermal control system allows us to maintain the temperature essentially the same as we as humans like, so about 30 sure. degrees C. And that then that module then gets placed into the pack, and our biggest pack has 12 of those modules, and each of those modules are 15 kilowatt hours, so it builds up to 180 kilowatt hours. And you've got some coolant moving through there. Yeah, so the coolant's going through each of the modules, and yeah. then that runs through a chiller, and the chiller can adjust the temperature to, of the coolant going in regardless of ambient. Yeah. And that's part of it is the mechanical system and the thermal system, the way we've set that up. But the other big part is how we control it from an electronics point of view, from a battery management point of view. So the way our battery management system set up is it actually is designed to learn how you as the user are driving, how you're charging, and it takes that learning and it adjusts all the various control parameters within the BMS mm -hmm. to optimize performance. And primarily we're looking at optimizing performance to maintain health, yeah. to, to make sure the batteries last for as many miles as possible without any de degradation to the amount of capacity. Yeah, that would be bad. I, I, I've actually experienced and gone through a battery swap because I, really? I, I was I was pretty hard on my first battery. In, in your in, S? in my Model S, yeah, yeah. So I've already done a battery swap and uh, everything is going great so far. But I think one of the things that Tesla has an opportunity to do a little bit better is to show the user. Um, how that battery is reacting over long periods of time. Sure. So um, do you have any, any sort of um, insights <coughs> on how, how the truck and SUV will represent that and show that to the owner? So it's an awesome question because one of, the, one of the interesting things is that the way you use the battery, uh, particularly the way you charge it, has big implications on how it's aging. So if you're supercharging or fast charging yes. it all the time, you're pumping electrons in really hard, you're just wearing the heck out of the cells. So what we do is we actually watch how you behave. Mm -hmm. And if you're someone that supercharges a lot, we actually adjust certain things within the battery. And of course, we can't force you to not supercharge or fast charge, but we can watch that yeah. and make recommendations yeah. and then have you participate in this process of optimizing behavior. And But it's a sort of a user-selected process. So sure. if you say, look, I'm just going to use it how I want to use it, that's fine, but we also have some really interesting thoughts on how we can help you ensure yeah. the health of your own battery. I, I think education is really key because um, you know if people know that they're maybe harming the battery, accelerating the wear of the battery, then hopefully they won't do that yep. as often. Yep. I saw an interesting uh, thing about your the underside of your battery pack, how you uh, did quite a bit of interesting testing, yeah. drop testing. So All kinds of things, yeah, yeah. But please t tell me what sort of uh, rigorous uh, testing you so, put this, so, these vehicles through. Yeah, so one of the, so you think about crash testing and crash certification. So there's all your, your standard tests yeah. that are regulated and, and are measured by things like the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. For us, because the vehicle's about going off road yeah. and, and doing these extreme things, we need to make sure we protect the bottom of the vehicle for let's say you're coming down a trail and you land in the middle of the vehicle on a hard rock or a sharp rock. Uh, so we have essentially what we think of as like a ballistic shield yeah. that sits in the bottom of the vehicle. And it has to be able to withstand some pretty aggressive tests. And for yeah. us, the way we've set that up is essentially a point load or a sharp load 
of the vehicle coming down and landing on that right in the middle of the pack mm -hmm. at 30 miles an hour. Yeah. So that's a it's a carbon Kevlar multi-material shield that's on the bottom that can protect against any damage happening in that event. Super and it's cool. been one of the areas of big innovation in terms of material science and of course some really fun, uh, interesting testing. I love it. Uh, I, I think. I, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall with some of that testing. Uh, okay, so I think uh, maybe we'll wrap up with one really key thing in terms of your success and other people's success who are starting car companies, which is the capital intensive aspect of it. And this is one area that makes me extremely confident about Rivian's success in that you've, you've made some good moves to make sure that you've got the funding to be yeah. able to carry this, carry this through all the way to the very end to production and getting yeah. these vehicles into the hands. Sure. So talk a little bit about that and, and, and the, the confidence level that you have around that and how challenging it can be for, for car companies. In, in many ways, this is one of the biggest challenges. This, this takes uh, just such a significant amount of capital. and. Um, Surprisingly, I think this is sometimes overlooked. This is not yeah. something you can do with a hundred million dollars. We're seeing this, by the way, with Tesla. Tesla is going through these challenges it, right it, now. This takes, uh, if you're very, very good, a billion dollars to really launch and get to your first sort of revenue, if you will. Uh, so we've carefully and methodically put together the right set of partners and investors to ensure we have all the capital necessary to really scale this business. Because this does take, as we said, some, some big investments. Um, the development, the tooling, the launch, all of that require significant capital. Uh, so we position ourselves really well in that regard. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to sit yeah. in here and, and chat it up. Beautiful setting. A absolutely, yeah. couldn't complain. Yeah. Um, for those that are watching this and learning about Rivian for the first time, you, people can now put deposits down yep. on, on yep. vehicles, so maybe just sh share a quick bit about how they go about doing that and how sh much. Sure, so we just started this at the at the LA Reveal yep. uh, a few months back, and for $1,000 you put in a fully refundable deposit, uh, gets your place in line yep. uh, for, for a vehicle, and you can select either the truck or the SUV. And uh, of course, with that, you then become part of our closest community. We start to, we're launching some things here in the next few months where we start to use this community to get feedback. Yeah. And of course there's other things like you get you cool Some shirts swag. and swag yeah. and things of that nature. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's important also to get in line because there is a, a lot of demand and excitement for the product. Rivian.com? At Rivian, yeah, go to our website, yeah. Rivian.com. Yeah. Awesome, thanks again, RJ, awesome. really appreciate it and uh, looking forward to a lot of success here in the near future. Awesome, thanks. Yep.